Hi there, this is Alana. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Can you hear my coffee pot percolating behind me? That's what that is. Is that what it is? I thought it was, at first I thought it was a dog panting. No, no. And then I thought maybe it's like, a, you know, those echoes where it's like, shh, shh, shh. Oh. yeah, yeah, right, right. No, nope, it's the coffee maker. So you actually, so it's just a regular, it's not literally a percolator. But no, 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 it's just like a regular drip coffee. Okay, yeah. but it's just doing, that is great. That's yep, a great yep. background. Like I could fall asleep to that sound. I love it so much. <laughs> so how are you, Jamie? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing well. It's fun to be back in um, recording mode. It is. This has been a great recording day and mm -hmm. yeah, it's been good. It's been a good break from what we're going to be talking about today, which is prayer for homeschool, homeschool. moms. It's been, yeah, it's been, it's a good a good creative break from, mm -hmm. you know, for me, what has really been a challenging couple to several weeks to month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been really yeah. challenging. Well, we'll definitely spend a little bit of time digging into some of the challenges. Cause you know, I love doing that with you. Oh, I'm, I know. I'm kind of the opposite, not the opposite. Like to me today is a nice break. I've been doing, I've been like probably three times as busy as I normally have been just in the past, like five or six work days. So, I mean, not long-term there's just, and there, my coffee's done, <laughs> you know, it just like, there were several projects that I'm super excited about all of them, but they all kind of are happening at the same time. So for me, I woke up, I looked at my calendar and like, Oh, nothing but recording with Jamie. That was all that was written on there. It made me really, really happy. Nice. You know, what's really strange. I feel like I can smell your coffee. Like I just now got a whiff of freshly brewed coffee <laughs> and it's not mine because it's mine's downstairs and it's been a long time. So yeah, I That's love this. Hilarious. I'm, that, that sound has brought me so much joy today. <laughs> just Is it true? It. You know what I miss, miss, miss? is walking into a coffee shop with mm -hmm. my journal and getting myself a latte and sitting there with my headphones for like 90 minutes. I miss that. Yeah. Some of my fondest memories of college revolve around this little coffee shop that was adjacent to our dining hall. And mm -hmm. I would go there all the time. And I loved, um, they had hazelnut coffee, like hazelnut mm, flavored. Yeah, sounds they would have Their coffee brew of the day, but they always mm -hmm. had hazelnut coffee. Mm. And I would just get a you know big thing of hazelnut coffee and I would do Bible study or study yeah. and just the smell of the coffee shop. When I was in college, I would go into Boston. It was actually Cambridge. I'd go into Cambridge on the weekends just by myself. I'd take my Bible. This was back when I was spending a ton of time like Bible journaling. Mm -hmm. So I would take my Bible and my journal and I would spend hours. There was this little like clam chowder and sourdough bread bowls. It, it was like a mix between a shop and a stand, right? So it was like, it wasn't really a restaurant, but it wasn't quite just like a vending cart. You know, there were some seats and stuff. Oh, um, yeah. A lot of outdoor seating if it was nice out. Or there was... Um, there's a huge bookstore, or at least there was. I hope it's still there called The Coop. It, it was like Harvard's independent bookstore. And it was like multiple stories and it was very inviting. Like they had chairs all over, like they kind of wanted you to sit and hang out. Like they wanted it to feel more like a, a library or something than just a shop. So I remember doing lots of Bible journaling out there in Cambridge. That's nice. Yeah. It's a and long time ago. And that's where I'm yeah. sure you got a lot of your uh, inspiration for the Kennedy Stern suspense yeah, series. Yeah. That whole setting. Uh -huh. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So today, what are we talking about? I know. Oh, we're talking about homeschool. Yeah, Prayer for homeschool moms, Yay. which, you know, some of you are homeschooling by choice and many mm -hmm. of you are probably homeschooling through necessity and you might be really fighting it. So. Yeah. And some of you aren't homeschooling and some of you aren't moms. So there we go. <laughs> That's true. So those of us that are not, or those of you who are not moms or homeschool moms, this is equipping you to pray for them because exactly. You know, and yeah, everybody knows them. moms who are actively homeschooling right now. And so, even yes. if you, yeah. And even just in the generic sense of this is a very crazy year for school and mm -hmm. in general for everybody yes. because of COVID-19. 
Exactly. So this is a reminder for everybody. Don't feel like you've got to be a mom with school age kids. Don't feel like you've got to be homeschooling. We're going to tie in a lot of things to be praying for just with like what Jamie said, the school year being so weird with the homeschool moms, you know, prayers they have. Another thing I for sure want to touch on is how to incorporate more prayer into your homeschool day. And that's going to apply, you know, regardless of whether or not your kids are in school or out of school or in home or out of home, or if they're your biological kids or kids of your heart. So lots of nuggets for anybody. You don't have to be homeschooling at this moment. I actually heard a very fun quote. I read this book called Going Public. It was by a couple who chose to, like, intentionally chose to keep their kids in public school, and they were involved Mm -hmm. in um, Athletes in Action, I think. And um, one of the things that she would always say when people asked about, you know, their kids' schools, she would say, I... My kids attend public school, but I also, or I homeschool my kids, but they also attend public school. Mm-hmm. That's a nice because way to look at it. she viewed, you know, she's like, I am still their primary teacher, even though they're mm-hmm. in public school. There's yeah. homeschooling. That's not what we're focusing on today, but I just think no, that. No, but that's still a nice kids, way to look at it. Yeah, when my kids are in public school, that is my thought mm-hmm. is schooling happens at home too. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to leave any judgmental attitude you guys have about homeschool versus public school at the door. That's leave it at not the door. at all. Leave it at the door. We, um, yeah, we're not diving into that here. I absolutely believe like if every single Christian family pulled their kids out of the public, pulled their kids out of public school, that would be a mess. That would not be right. So yeah, don't, um, Nobody's on a high horse here, (laughs) and a lot of us are scrambling this year, especially to figure things out. So some of you guys are going to be kind of homeschooling a little bit by accident, like Jamie and her family. Like, I know you've done homeschooling before, but that wasn't the plan, you know, were it not for COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Our family's always done homeschool, but, you know, we've also, our kids are involved in some of the local school things. So lots of options. But again, this is going to be more about praying through this weird time in history as it affects families and also just adding more prayer time throughout your day, whether you've got kids at home or not, whether you're a parent or not, whether you're married or not, whether you homeschool or not. So that's what we're talking about. Love it. Should we pray? Let's do it. (laughs) God, we just thank you for this time to focus on just what a, um, in some cases, unexpected year this has been. And just to, first of all, acknowledge that you are on your throne to give you thanks and praise for who you are and what you're doing in our lives and in our homes. No matter how many curveballs we've been thrown, God, they're not surprises to you. And we thank you for that, God. We praise you that your hand is in it. And we just pray for eyes to see what our next steps are, how we can glorify you in this time, how we can maximize the time that you've given us and steward our families well through. Um, through unexpected circumstances. And we do thank you for the reminder that no matter how much we feel like we're in control, it's an illusion because at any moment, anything can happen. And um, the comfort shouldn't be in our great planning, although planning is good. Um, The comfort and our, our ultimate security needs to come from knowing that you are in control and that our times are in your hands. And we just thank you for that, God. Guide us and direct our conversation today. We just pray it'll be a blessing to us and to women all over as they school their kids or pray for those that are schooling their kids this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our verse of the day is from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. I love that. You're getting me super, like I'm either really emotional or I'm just hormonal because this was one of the first passages that our kids like memorized together as a family. Um, And we did like hand motions, like signs for all of them. And we made it into this little chant. So as you were doing it, um, I was hearing the chant in my head and it was very cute. Well, I am definitely tearing up. And I think it's because this is a, it's a powerful verse. I mean, it just, yeah, it's a powerful verse. And the fact that we are to love God first mm-hmm. and then pass that on 
to our yeah. kids, whatever yeah. way we see fit. Yeah. So just for fun, what is one piece of homeschool advice you give to someone teaching kids from home for the first time this year? Oh, Jamie, you know, it's going to be hard for me to have one. <laughs> you can pick your top three. Alrighty. This was a Let's selfish, see. just for fun question. That's I right. Know you have a lot of tips <laughs> and I'm waiting. All right. Here are my tips in no particular order. Um, a big one is don't feel like you need to replicate the public school day. Don't feel like you need a blackboard and a desk with a pull up top and that you need to have an hour of this subject that moves to an hour of that subject. Like, don't feel like you need to reproduce a classroom setting. Um, that's a huge one. I think another huge one is just embrace how unique your homeschool day can be based on your family, based on your kids, based on their teaching style. So for example, like we're never going to feel guilty if like, let's say we get the chance to go, I don't know, on a, on a hunting trip in the middle of Alaska and it's going to take the whole family away for a week. Like I'm never going to feel like Oh no, my, like that's where education happens. Like that is the education. Um, so that's a good one is just to allow for lots of flexibility in your schedule and your expectations. And then just remember that like a kid who's learning one-on-one -on -one with you, like 10 minutes of that is worth like at least 30 minutes of classroom time. Um, and maybe even more, you know, like, so don't feel like you've got to fill our day with like seven hours full of stuff or else it's going to be overwhelming for everybody involved. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. Um, I think with the current circumstances, we talked about this on another episode we recorded today, but mm -hmm. there is a big difference between homeschool and virtual school. And I know that every school is doing it differently. And there are some virtual schools right now where, I mean, I know friends of mine that have multiple kids in full on just virtual school where mm -hmm. when school gets back in session, they'll be in the classroom. And mm -hmm. when it's not, they're sitting in Zoom like all day long, right, basically right. like, and, you know, yeah. and, and they're like appointments where they have to be there. So they're like literally juggling all these Zoom appointments mm -hmm. and they kind of have, like, they're kind of having to be there all day long, like at certain mm -hmm. times. And it is kind yeah. of trying, like replicating the school day, mm -hmm. which that could be really, really tough for yeah. a family that um, didn't plan for this, you know, that wasn't, you know, a working mom or a working from home mm -hmm. mom or mm -hmm. something. So um, what would you say to those families? Like what would be a piece of right. advice for them? So really like just recognize that this is a temporary thing and everybody's mm -hmm. doing the best they can. So yeah, it might not be ideal. It might be weird. It might be inconvenient, but most likely this is just going to be maybe a couple months. I, I really don't think this is going to be like an entire school year long thing. I know at least in Alaska, nobody's going into any of this with here's the answer for the whole school year. So yeah, I would just give so much grace and patience to your child, to their teacher, to the district. I mean, to be honest, like the tips that I gave really are for a family that is homeschooling, where it's like the, the parents are the ones in charge of what they're learning when. Right. But in this case, it's totally different because it is like, a school district that is responsible for the education, the nine to five education, right? Of, or, you know, eight to three or however long your school day is. So, you know, honestly, that probably is going to look like sitting in front of Zoom for the whole day and replicating the public school experience. And that's really the best, the best that people can do right now. But don't, don't feel worried if you feel super strongly that your child is not getting what they need feel free to find a temporary solution. Maybe that means that you're going to pick their curriculum and teach them from home until the schools open up. There's so many other ways. So don't feel like you've got to do it that way. But if you are doing it that way, just, yeah, roll with it, be flexible. And just remember, this is a temporary thing in a really, really weird setting. Yeah. And I think, um, one thing that I heard as a piece of advice for families juggling multiple kids and Zoom sessions, mm -hmm. and um, and this could also help families that are full on homeschooling that have kids that all need individualized attention. When right. you're working with one kid, don't be afraid to have a chore chart or something for them to say, okay, now you do a chore while I'm working on this. You know, you do the dishes or you walk mm -hmm. the dog. This is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. I'm 
I've been, it's difficult for me to delegate. And yeah. I know that's ironic that I'm a mom and that's kind of what moms are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But I'm the kind of person that's just like, I'll do it. It's faster. And then I don't have to bug yeah. and hear the pushback. It. And that's not healthy for anybody. Mm-hmm. So I've really been trying to do like, okay, I actually sat down last night because I, I was like, something's got to give. I have like an actual, like serious schedule of if I need to, and it's a guideline, but because one of my kids is virtual and the other two are homeschooled and a little bit more flexible, I have certain times where I'm like, okay, this is mom meeting, mom meeting here, this person Mm -hmm. gets chore time. My oldest is pretty self-sufficient, but my other two, um, but he needs help too sometimes and guidance. So anyway, having, having like piece of paper with options for mm-hmm. creative things to do that aren't necessarily yeah, that's really smart school, but they could include and, chores and dog help yeah not every family is going to agree with this my opinion is don't feel like you've got to tell them what to do for seven hours a day either like right downtime's important for everybody so maybe you know I, I love what you're doing where it's, it sounds like it's almost a choice right go read a book or go, you know, listen to some music or go do something crafty or go do some cleaning. Like there's a choice. And I feel like that's one of the real benefits of homeschooling is you can kind of tailor your kids' education to what fits with you, your family dynamics, your kids' interests. Mm -hmm. So also like, you know, if you're busy, you're, you are not like, and I'm talking specifically to parents who are not used to being the homeschool parent and find their kids at home. Like this is not your, I don't want to say job because like, like you started out with, we all are responsible for our kids' education, but at this exact minute, you don't feel like if you don't have your child doing something that looks productive for seven or eight hours that you've done them a disservice, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's, I mean, that's just going to cause you all to burn out. And like I said, like you can be so much more efficient when you're working with a kid one-on-one. They don't need that much time. Mm -mm. No. And You know, I think another thing that has really helped me is going with the different uh, rhythms of my kids' natural schedules. So I have one that typically wakes up earlier than the others. Mm -hmm. Um, He likes time. It's my oldest. He'll sleep late sometimes, but he enjoys being woken up a little bit early Mm because he actually likes for me to sit there and I'll have coffee and I'll make him a chai and we'll sit there and- that's like his love language is time, quality Aww. time. And I think it's because he was an only child for five years and now he has two mm-hmm. younger siblings that take a so lot of my is, time. Yeah, so, this is his time with you. That's awesome. Yeah. So if I make the effort to get us both up early or like if he has yeah. morning hockey and comes home and everyone's Aww. asleep, we'll just have that little time. That's and then cool. I can, you know, if he has questions about school or just to sit there and hang out. But don't, um, what I, what I realized in the car yesterday was that I have been, okay, let me give a metaphor. Okay. So I was, um, we have apple trees outside of our house that were there when we moved in. And sometimes I feel like they're a burden. There's several different ways that they're a burden. They are really, uh, we, we consider them important and valuable because there aren't a lot of apple trees that I know of in Alaska and Mm. we like having them. Um, but when they're ready, I have to process them and can mm-hmm. them because they don't last long. They bruise. Right. Really right. Bad. So sometimes I find myself grumbling in the fall saying, oh, man, mm-hmm. so many apples and that's just one more thing I have to do. Right. The other thing is we have some issues with neighbor kids, like coming in the middle of the night and like climbing the trees and shaking them down and taking and stealing mm-hmm. apples. We're very open. Like we love sharing with the neighbors, but that's not okay. And so I yeah, had, no kidding. that started up again. There was a kid that came by yesterday, just in broad daylight, climbed the tree and was like shaking the tree. So I had to go out and talk to him and I hate conflict. So in my mm-hmm. mind, I'm like, I'd almost rather not have apple trees. Right, right. All these troubles, you know, mm-hmm. but it's the same thing with having the kids home. I was in the car and I'm thinking, yeah. what a whiner. I have these mm-hmm. great apple trees and all these apples. Right. Thank God for that abundant blessing. Like that is yeah. a huge blessing. So mm-hmm. what about the inconveniences? And it's the same with the kids at home. Thank you, God, that I have this time with these kids. And so if I can take advantage of it, and maybe I'm not like even doing school the entire time. Maybe I'm having mm-hmm. coffee and tea with my son. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe I'm reading a book with my daughter, you know, with her on my lap. Or like last night she wanted to do this painting thing. 
and I didn't want to get all the stuff out, but I ended up doing uh -huh. it. She had so much fun and we had a great Aww. time together. And now she has this beautiful picture that we can hang up and remember that time together. So, yeah. 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 My son and I did something super cute the other night. I was tired. I was like, by the end of the day, he's super energized. And that's Aww. like, as I shut down is when he <laughs> like gets really, really active. Yeah. And so I was trying to just kind of like have my f mentally free time. And he was in the room with me and he's like, mom, you want to play a game? Watch this. I'm like, okay. So he scribbled on the whiteboard. He just took a pen, and like scribbled. And then the game goes like we each took turns. We passed the pen back and forth and turns the scribble into a picture that like actually made sense. I've heard and of that. It was really, really fun. So yeah, that's another thing. Like sometimes we're tired and like, I totally hear you about the pain. It's like, no, please. That sounds like such a mess. One of my kids for him, it's like tr experimenting with recipes in the kitchen. Yes. And my whole thought is like, it's so messy. It's a little bit dangerous. It's potentially wasteful. Can we please not? But then if I say no, it's like five minutes later. It's so what if I do this? And so, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's tiring, but you're right. It's a blessing. I think that in almost every area where we're prone to complain about something, it's helpful to remind ourselves of the, um, almost like pick your pain. So like, let's say that I'm totally mad with you because podcasting with you is just such a drain on my time, which we both know. And I hope our listeners know it's absolutely not true. So I'm totally comfortable making that the hypothetical. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, I'm so tired of podcasting. I'm so tired of showing up here. But honestly, it's like, no matter what you do, there's going to be pain points. So I can either get a little bit annoyed about maybe like having to set up my microphone and my camera, or I can get, uh, otherwise I'd be doing something else and be getting slightly annoyed with that. So it's just sort of, there's always going to be annoyances in anything we do. You can't mm -hmm. pick an annoyance free life, <laughs> right? So we can have kids who sometimes feel like they sap our energy or we would be lonely and the house would be too quiet. Do you know what I mean? It's just... Mm -hmm. You, um, yeah, you can focus on the blessings of the season you're in, or you can really get nitpicky. And then when that season ends, you can be like, man, I wish I hadn't complained. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And I think just mm -hmm. looking at the positive things and creating positive things is also important, you know, like creating those moments of, yes, because I, I think about some things that I'm like, okay, I can sit down here and help my kid with this assignment and I can have a bad attitude about it and I can mm -hmm. be short and curt and impatient mm -hmm. or it can be fun for us. And sometimes I, I pretend like I'm happy just mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. started. Yep. I think, okay, how would I be acting if I was tutoring a stranger? Oh you know, yeah. How mm -hmm. would I act toward that kid? I wouldn't let them see my frustration. I wouldn't right. roll my eyes at them or, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a cool so, way to look at it. And when I start that, when I start with that attitude, it kind of becomes real because my mm -hmm. kid responds in a positive way. Yes. And I might laugh about something and my kid laughs. And by the time, mm -hmm. you know, before we know it, we're having a good time. I love that. Yeah. But see, that's a hypothetical because the last week or so it's been, I've had a very poor attitude and mm -hmm. I have sensed myself getting really short with the kids and like, okay, when I feel like things are getting out of hand. And I think for me, the issue is that I don't tend to run a like tight ship mm -hmm. and then I feel like things are getting out of control and then I feel like I have to be ultra mean you have to, to get yeah. their attention mm -hmm. and then I have to come in like a drill sergeant all right now right. you take right. this you get the trash can and put all the trash yeah. in. you take the dishes and do this but mm -hmm. if I could just pretend to have fun yeah. for a little bit, then I'm gonna really have fun <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's um you know act the way you want to feel yeah and yeah, you, it doesn't mean that you're disingenuine. It just means that you are choosing to take your thoughts captive. Yes. And yeah, I love that. Um, I think that we can tie it into a prayer principle we talked about when we did our episode on praying imaginatively. Mm -hmm. Like I almost picture you at night and you're thinking about the next homeschool day and kind of praying over your family and praying over your schedule. And what I picture mm -hmm. is like you can visualize that sense of joy that you want to bring to your homeschool time. Yeah. Um, 
this can apply no matter what you do. If you're talking about going to your work job or having a hard conversation with a loved one, like as you're praying about that beforehand, you picture like, what are the emotions that I want to bring into this meeting? What is the takeaway that I want the other person to feel? And that can really help. It, it kind of turns into a form of prayer on its own is just kind of picturing how, um, not only how you want like that interaction to go, but also like the, the essence that you want to bring to it, right? Do you want to show up as the drill sergeant or mm -hmm. do you want to show up with someone who's fun and patient and, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. And I love what you said about visualizing the day, praying over mm -hmm. that day. I think that is mm -hmm. so important because... Yeah you know, that's something that I, I haven't been doing as much. I've been mm -hmm. so caught up in what I need to do and making lists mm -hmm. and trying to get it done that I have forgotten. So a cool story is yesterday, yeah. yesterday I was, I was just feeling like, oh my goodness, something's got to give, got to make a list, got to put a schedule together. But before that I just stopped and I had gone, I don't even know what I had to go get in my car, but I had to run out and grab something and come back. And I was sitting in the driveway in my car alone and I just stopped and I prayed and just for God to order my thoughts, take mm -hmm. my schedule. I, for the first time yeah. in a long time, wrote down just prayers of, Lord, bless this mm -hmm. attempt at being a really good teacher for my kids and role model for yeah. them. And, but order my thoughts, order my schedule. And there was a delinquent blog post for Candidly Christian that I write blog posts for sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's been hanging over my head. I, it was due at the end of August. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh man, I, I need to get this done. I had started it, but it's not finished. And I'd let them know it was late and it was okay. Right, I, right. I didn't know when I was going to have time mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. energy to write it. And I, not, not like the minute that I had finished praying through my schedule, I had to check on something for podcasting because there was something mm -hmm. on Facebook Messenger I was checking about for an interview. And I clicked on Facebook Messenger and I saw a ding and it was Valerie from Candidly Christian. And mm -hmm. she said, you don't actually have a post due. Oh, funny. You already <laughs> turned it in and we took uh, a month off in January or whatever month. We okay. Took a month off. She's like, you don't actually have a post due until the end of this month. That's and I cool. It was just... A, like a God wink, you know, like a reminder. It's God creating time, like we've God talked about. time, you know, and mm -hmm. sure, was that post not due anyway? Yeah, but God, I think, orchestrated that to remind Absolutely. me. Absolutely. When you come to me, yeah. when you ask me to organize your schedule, mm -hmm. you, you can't do it in your own strength. You just can't, yeah. and that's okay. Um, but you can do it in me and I can help you and you can learn along mm -hmm. the way. So it's a great example of taking a pause in the day. Like one of the um, mindful Christian prayer episodes is just prayers to reset your day, right? Sometimes you just, mm -hmm. you need a hard reset <laughs> on yeah. the day. And I feel like even just taking a five or 10 minute break, kind of like what it sounds like you did to just sort of reshift the focus, repicture how you want the day to go, reprioritize that can create like three hours worth of um, extra time, right? Like I'm picturing no matter what it is, maybe you've got a ton of things, housework or like house upkeep, administrative things to do. Maybe it's homeschool stuff. Um, I know, especially at the beginning of the year, we had a lot of like sign up for this, buy this, get this textbook, you know, like there was a lot of organizational things. I, and we go into that feeling really, really scatterbrained. Mm -hmm. Right. And even just taking like five or 10 minutes to do this, like this deep breath, this commit your time to God, commit this project to God, and then just kind of organize, like maybe even write out your to do's and the order you're going to do them in like that can make your time five times more efficient. And so yeah. I really love that quote that we've come back to a lot, but like, if you, if you really don't feel like, if you feel like you're too busy, <laughs> to pray, like you can't afford not to. So it was Martin Luther. He's like, I have yeah. so much to do today. There's no way I can get it done without at least three hours of prayer. <laughs> and it feels so counterintuitive, but it really, really makes sense. I've been thinking about, um, you know, I know that pruning is a metaphor that Jesus uses quite a bit. Pastors use quite a bit. And it wasn't until I started getting more into like tending my house plants that mm -hmm. I, I saw it there. Cause I think a pruning is like for a vineyard and I've never had a vineyard, <laughs> but 
even this like so i i cut these leaves off and yeah i feel a little bad because now my plant looks smaller mm -hmm. right but then those leaves i can replant and repot and turn into other plants plus the original that like i cut down to here is now so much healthier mm -hmm. and i feel like we can do that with our time too like god what do i need to prune back in my time and then he he causes the expansion that happens after that. Yeah. And multiplies it, you know, it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Yeah. It is. it is. So picture like giving your schedule to God, giving your to-do list to God, like laying it out before him, God, here's my calendar. Like help me make sense of this because it feels really hectic mm -hmm. right now. That can be great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then, you know, especially as moms, we all have those days where the whole family needs a reset, you know? And so maybe it's like, like you said, you, you start acting more playful and fun and get some laughter and like that is the perfect reset. Or, you know, maybe it is, Hey guys, it's all just take a minute to pray. Let's take a minute to, you know, whatever it is. And that's teaching your kids as well to not like scurry from thing to thing to thing to thing. Like that's what I, I don't love about um, kind of the, the public school. Like you've got seven hours of class and it's just one thing to the next thing. And it's just, you're always moving. You never really yeah. dive deep into something. And those transitions can be really stressful because like the transition from first class to second class, you don't have time to to make that mental switch. And so you're bringing all the confusion. Maybe your first class is math and you're confused. And then by fourth hour, you're in English, which you usually love, but you still have brought that confusion right. along with you. Compounded confusion. <laughs> Compounded confusion. And we do that as adults in our lives, right? When we're just flitting from one thing to another. So I really encourage Ooh, yeah. anybody who's who feels like they're having just a flitting day to just pause. It doesn't have to be longer than like two or three minutes. Just pause, reset, Give your time back to God. You could find the Mindful Christian Prayers episode on prayers to reset your day. Just do something to kind of symbolically create a fresh start, mm -hmm. right? Um, go change your clothes, right? Like if that's what it's going to take to make it feel like you've got a chance at a new day and you can bring a new attitude into your day, whatever that is, I think it's really, really useful. And prayer is like the perfect transition tool, right? To go from one thing to the next thing. Like even as an example, you and I missed a prayer date last week. Yeah. And so at first we were juggling, well, should we just, today we knew it was going to be a recording day and it was, well, should we have our prayer time and then record? And I've gotten so conscious about like the energy it takes to transfer your, or transition from one thing to the other. Like, no, let's, let's keep it separate. That was smart. <laughs> you know? That was Because so otherwise, smart. yeah, otherwise we're like, we're trying to cram in prayer and then we're trying to cram in our episodes. And sometimes mm -hmm. we just need breathing room. Like yeah. if I could give the world anything other than, you know, like saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and maybe houseplants, I would give them breathing room. <laughs> <laughs> breathe guys, breathe. Well, I really think that that idea, um, I, I think sometimes we have to fight for our breathing room. And so the other day I had, you know, I've told myself I would like to, if not every single day, sure. I'd love to do it every day. It doesn't always happen every day, but I would love to every day get the kids together for just some kind of devotional, just to mm -hmm. kind of either at lunchtime or to start the day. And mm -hmm. I've done a couple of different ways this time. It was in the middle of the day and I wanted to just get all the kids together and have a time of prayer and Bible study and not even a long one, just a little yeah, bit of prayer, a yeah. little Bible study. Doesn't have to be a lot. Yep. No, like 10 or 15 minutes maybe, mm -hmm. but it was a struggle. I mean, like it was a fight and yeah. I think there are two different times. I think with, with homeschooling, with virtual school, with whatever, there is a time to let it go and to mm -hmm. leave mm -hmm. it and move on to something else. Because like you yeah. said, like Sometimes you need a reset. And so, okay, your kid is struggling with math. They are frustrated and throwing pencils. Mm -hmm. Not that I've experienced that or done it myself. <laughs> and um, so they need to go to something else. Then you need to take yeah, a break, a brain sure. break or do something yep. different. But there is also a time to persevere and to push mm -hmm. through. And I mm -hmm. think we need the wisdom to know. And at this point, I it took five different tries to get started with this devotional. Yeah, and it's yeah. so ridiculous. 
but I just felt in my, I almost gave up several times because the kids mm-hmm. were fighting or they yep. weren't listening or my littlest one was messing around, but I just felt like, um, and I almost was like, look, this isn't working. I'm, I'm going to go where the momentum is and we'll, we'll do something different. Yeah. But I just felt God saying, persevere, push mm-hmm. through this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it took five tries, but on the fifth try, I got everyone to listen and participate Aww. and, yeah. um, but it was what we needed. And like, I just yeah. looked back to that time and there was, there was sowing of seeds there that was really good. The kids came up with questions that were good. And mm-hmm. I do believe that that's what God wanted. So I don't know. Yeah. I would say that, um, I can't tell you when the right time is to push through and when the time mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. to let it go and switch gears, but be aware, right. I guess, for us all to just be aware that there is time for both and to just ask God mm-hmm. for guidance to know and wisdom to I know absolutely agree. which is which. Mm-hmm. And don't ever use prayer as a punishment. Don't be like, you guys are so grumpy. You got to stop and pray right now. Got to like, do this Bible study or else. Yeah. Or like, you know, you've been, you've been talking back to your mom, go find me 10 Bible verses about respecting, you know, your parents. I don't think, right. I don't like the idea of using those as punishments. Um, some parents yeah, might disagree with me. And that's a really cool thing about being a parent is you get to decide. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, I don't like that. Um, you know, I had a, a story that I thought might be encouraging to you, Jamie. So I have a friend who we were in a homeschool co-op together and her kids were a little older than mine at the time. And they were involved in a lot. Like they were a sports family. They were really into like rigorous academics. I mean, like very, very, um, grade A, you know, like college bound homeschool kids. And she talked about, and it made total sense to all of us. Like there were probably a dozen moms in this conversation. She's like, you know what, if I were to list every single thing that we would do on the perfect homeschool day, there's probably only like one or maybe two days a month where everything would get checked off that list. And so even the people who have the best like homeschool setup, the best scenario, the best space, the best time, the best schedule, the best like financial resources to pour into educating your kids. None of it, it like it, it's silly to expect the day to go perfect. <laughs> and when it does go really, really well, that's when you get to like sit back and appreciate that you had a great day. Mm-hmm. A lot of times in each of our days, I, I find that usually like there's one thing that goes really well, mm-hmm. like just one mm-hmm. thing. And you know, yeah. like I, I'll have to say yesterday, I feel like art with my daughter was the thing that went really, yeah, really well. Yeah, that sounds cool. It was. And I mean, that was at night. That wasn't even during the school day. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and you know, a couple of days before that, it was something different, but I don't know. I don't ever feel like I get it all done. And even, I think one of the challenges with virtual school for my daughter, she's in Japanese immersion, which means mm-hmm. a Zoom meeting in the morning followed by Japanese work, which usually takes, I don't know, I don't even know how long it takes, maybe not that terribly long, but, um, but it takes a while afterwards for her to get through that. But then she's got the full English curriculum also of like, I mean, I think, honestly, I think it's ridiculous the amount of stuff that they put in there. I mean, she's doing PE virtual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not just like, Hey, get moving. Um, right. Like questions. Choreographed. Oh, oh, I see. Uh And answer questions about your health, but that's not every day. So it's different, but it's, I think the specials are on whatever once a week or something. So that's probably, I thought it was every day for a while. And I thought that's Mm -hmm. just too much. Um, but it's, it's just a lot of, okay, she's got to get this done and get this done. And, I think that the temptation is to feel like if you're not getting everything done perfectly and Mm -hmm. exactly on the time that it needs to be done, then you've failed at the whole Mm -hmm. shebang. And I think we need to really give ourselves some grace and say, you know what? Lots of grace. It's going to be a day when we're not going to get to language arts and we can double up Mm -hmm. on that the next day or we can do it that night or, you know, I don't know. It's just... And I think on the, on the other side of that coin too, we need to have a lot of grace with our teachers, mm-hmm. with the school district, For sure. Um, even with um, the homeschool co-op that I'm going through. Um, there's a lot of frustration with parents because they've more than doubled in size because of the yeah. stuff. 
and they just didn't have the infrastructure to exactly. process the purchase orders and the requisitions. Yeah. And yeah. So they're struggling and they've got parents that are being like negative about it. I know. And so I know. let's all just, let's be the light. Let's be the ones that say thank you, even when inside yep. we're frustrated. And For sure. Yeah. And whether your frustration is homeschool or work or church politics or marriage, you know, just go into it with the sense of people are doing the best that they can. Yeah. And even if they're not, you can't change that about them. So <laughs> right. you keep on doing the best that you can. Yeah. You know, it really is an exercise and just kind of letting go, you know, like pick your battles, decide, sure, we don't need to get to language arts today. Or, you know, sure, Sally said that we were going to paint the nursery pink and now we're painting it blue. Okay. You know, just developing a little bit more grace for those around us is so, so helpful. And, and again, I want to go back to just this idea of transitions in your day where like you're not dragging past stress and past disappointment mm -hmm. from the morning all the way to the evening, you know? Um, oh, and I loved what you said. I'm going to give another plug for the mindful Christian prayers podcast. You were talking mm -hmm. about, um, you know, how in every single day, it seems like there's one thing that's gone so well. And one thing I love to do, and this is actually part of the prayer routine and the prayers to end your day episode every single night, it's think about the best part of your day mm. and take a minute to just express gratitude for that. Take a minute to picture yourself back in that moment, right? You had this amazing connection with your daughter painting. You can like right now, think about that moment and experience that same joy, that same closeness. You don't need to be there with her and a paintbrush to experience that again. Like that's, that's a real gift. And so I feel like the more we're able to reflect on our past blessings and like deliberately let go of past disappointments, the more open we can be to all the blessings God has for us now. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to kind of summarize some of our points of how we can incorporate prayer. Can we go back and kind of like bullet point them mm -hmm. so I can put them in our notes? I'm, yes. I put, you know, praying, well, unless there's something else that you want to add. Were there any other points that you wanted to add about? Um, Maybe just how important it is to, you know, impart a love for the Lord into your homeschool day, however that looks. I don't think that needs to look like everybody does an hour of Bible elective at all, but just to be so conscientious of that in terms of like, what are you teaching your kids by example? What are they seeing as your priorities? Um, things like that, because again, like anybody can teach your child to, you know, do multiplication, right? It's a, it's, it truly is a gift and an honor. And yeah, there's stress and there's frustration, but it's also like such a privilege to be able to be that involved with our kids. And for those people who don't have kids at home, just use this as a reminder to be praying for the young families around you or the family that one day God's going to bring to you or the, the grandkids that you've got, you know, whatever stage you're in, I'm hoping that you've gleaned things that you can be praying for as well. Yeah. I mean, it can even be just going for a walk during the day, you know, going for a nature walk mm -hmm. during the day with your kids and, yeah. and just, you know, enjoying God's creation or, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be something canned. Yeah. Well, and I think it's super important for our kids to see us putting our spiritual life mm. as even more important than making sure they have a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. You know, because especially like our, both of us, we have 14 year olds, like there's going to come a point where we just, we can't spoon feed them broccoli. You know what I mean? Like we can't, we can't make them believe yeah. we can't make them obey in a lot of areas. And so I feel like it's way more important that my kids know mom's relationship with God is really, really important as opposed to mom feels really wound up to like, make sure that I have a good, like that I act like a good Christian. Do you, do you see what I mean for the difference? Oh, absolutely. I think one could be damaging, you know, it could be mm -hmm. damaging for you to have a very secretive private, you know, you might have a private, wonderful relationship with God, but if your kids don't know about it or don't see it and what they see is you like, you know, bringing the hammer down on them mm -hmm. for every little thing that they don't do right. Right. Um, you know, that could be discouraging and they could just mm -hmm. think if this is what 
the Christian life is about, I don't want anything to do with it. Exactly. But if they see you loving God and, Mm -hmm. you know, going to him to pray when, when things are hard, or like you said, I think that's important. And I struggle with this, letting your kids see you prioritizing your time with God, even over Mm -hmm. your time, making sure that they're spending time with God or time with them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, in a positive way. I mean, not like you're putting them off all the time for your own stuff, but right, right. Why do you, you keep know. talking to me? I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think that's that's yeah. a really powerful point. Okay, so let's do two lists. Let's do a list for people who are in our place where we do have kids at home that we're schooling, and then let's do another list of like ways that you can support homeschool families in prayer. Let's do that. Okay. So. I would say for families who are homeschooling, definitely like try some of those tips that we talked about, like the prayers at night where you're just kind of praying through the next day and not even like, yes, pray for things to go smoothly and that sort of thing, but also like picture the, the emotions that you want to convey, picture the essence of the experience you want to have with your kids. I think that can be really powerful in a way to like engage more of your like your whole self in your prayers as opposed to just a list, right? Please help math to go okay and help Johnny not to cry when he's doing his spelling list. Uh Um, You know, so maybe like having time either the night before or maybe the morning of to just kind of pray over the day. And this does not have to be exhaustive. This does not have to be like a 45 minute ordeal. But um, yeah, I think that kind of dedicating your homeschool time to the Lord in prayer is really important. You and I had a really neat thing that I absolutely want to turn into a tradition where we, we spent a couple hours praying over the school year, right? Just different things as they came up back and forth. And honestly, like we did that once, I don't feel like we need to do that again until probably next year. Right. So now it's more of the maintenance prayers, you know, it's kind of like you go to the doctor once a year and you get all your blood work done. And then the rest of the time you take your vitamins. Um, those are the things that I can think of. And then, you know, just be on, be on the lookout for ideas to based on their age level and spiritual interests slash maturity and things like that. Just find ways to incorporate prayer and Bible study into the day, but don't feel, I really don't think that this is something that needs to be like really pushed so hard that it gets everybody super stressed either. Right. Right. Absolutely. They're kind of like what you're saying. There's that balance. Sometimes you need to persevere through, you know, the resistance and other times it's probably okay to be like, you know what, this isn't working today. Let's, let's try it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What would you add to that? I like that. Um, the Using the prayer as a reset was another yeah. one that I really yeah. liked as one use prayer as a reset either mm-hmm. on your own like I did yeah. in the car the other day or bring kids mm-hmm. into it. And then, exactly. um, and then letting your kids see you prioritizing your spiritual life, even over making mm-hmm. sure their lives are on track. Right. Because really all we can do when it comes to our kids, spiritual lives is like try to modify their behavior, right? We cannot impact on our own. We can't will them to be loving. We can't, we can't. like force them to be forgiving. Mm-hmm. And so like, when that becomes the only focus and they realize that it truly is just the external behavior that, Mm -hmm. that you're expecting from them. Well, and one other thing along those lines is we talked about this and I think you brought up the fact that we need to come to terms, especially as our kids get older, that their walk with God is not going to always look like ours. And, you know, they're, opinions, even maybe their theology or the Mm -hmm. way that they interpret scripture or whatever, it could deviate from ours. And and we need to be open to their um, pursuing God, Mm -hmm. I guess, in the way, you know, we want it to be in the line of truth. um, But we also need to understand that their devotion to God doesn't have to look like ours and, yeah. and mm-hmm. not to belittle them or reprimand them or make them feel bad when it doesn't. Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah. Cause I kind of struggle with that. My son and I were talking, my oldest, he's developing opinions about politics and different things. Yep. That, and I desperately want him to believe what I believe. I really want mm-hmm. him to see the world through my eyes. Um, he is a very like black and white justice and Mm -hmm. facts. He has very little emotion when he looks Mm -hmm. at 
things that are happening in the world. He looks mm-hmm. at it from a very pragmatic, a mm-hmm. very pragmatic viewpoint. I tend to be very emotional in the way I process mm-hmm. things and empathetic. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I find myself pushing the issue like, no, but you've got to see this. You got to see this right, from my right. perspective. So I don't know. I feel like God has revealed to me like he is his own person and I designed him the way that he is. And he doesn't have to see things like you. And in fact, if he did, he wouldn't be equipped to do the job that I have exactly. created him to do. Yeah. I think that's so important. If you are a family with very strong political opinions and strong religious opinions, Mm -hmm. some people are going to disagree. I think it's super important to make sure that your child understands that there are good Christians on like who believe different things politically. There are, yeah, there's absolute truth. There's morality. There are some things that, you know, we're not going to say sin isn't sin, that kind of thing. But I think it's so important for your kids to recognize, do you know what, even if you end up having different thoughts about environmentalism, you are like, God isn't going to cast you out of his kingdom because you believe something different. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, our middle son went through a stage a couple years ago where he was really questioning creationism versus evolution. And he was very much wanting to explore this option that maybe God directed evolution to happen. And Scott and I have our opinions, but we also know amazing Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians on all sides of that debate. And so we just kind of told him, right, here's what we believe. Here's why we believe it. We gave him even a couple books. And then we're like, go ahead and yeah, do a little more research. Make sure it's an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And it was really cute. He came downstairs um, and he says, you know how I've been thinking about evolution, right? I said, yeah. He says, well, listen to this. And he points to Genesis 1.1. It says here that God created. And then he repeated it, created. And in his mind, that answered it. Wow. <laughs> you know, but we didn't push it. We, we recognize, hey, great Christians believe different things. Like nobody's theology looks exactly like everybody else's. And so, yeah, there's a lot of areas where I think it's smart to let our kids make those decisions. And if Scott and I had just said, nope, God made the earth. And if you, you know, if you don't believe that you're going to burn in hell, like that could be pretty, pretty damaging. It could. And, and yeah, definitely. So yeah, I think that's, I think raising kids that are going to be critical thinkers that are going to seek after God, like Mm -hmm. whenever they have questions, I think that's, that's the bottom line that we Mm -hmm. want, you know, is for them to think critically and, and seek God for everything. So yeah. Yep. Um, Real quick prayer points for families who just wants to prayerfully support school-aged kids. I think for sure to be praying for the school districts, the teachers, the places where they're trying to figure out how to do distance learning, um, as well as like working parents who are now trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Those are the two that pop into my head. Oh, and you know what? This is super sad, but let's throw in there like kids who are in unsafe situations and now they don't have the safety of a school to go to. Yeah. And that definitely is painful. I heard a teacher talking about just how every holiday and spring break and summer vacation and Christmas break that Mm -hmm. they are, they're heart sick over the kids that they know know Mm -hmm. go into a difficult situation. Well, with this, we don't know when it's going to end. And that has been one of the hard things for teachers, I think, is knowing that there are Mm -hmm. kids that are in difficult situations, you know, to pray that those kids would be seen and found and to be. And God can use, yeah, God can use so many things. I heard the sweetest story that made me like want to bawl my eyes out. This was like, I believe this person is now older than you and I are. And, um, he was in a very, very volatile and unsafe home situation. And he was only like eight or 10, but already at that age, like suicidal. I mean, it was terrible. And Mr. Rogers came on TV and told him how special he was and how much he loved him and like literally saved this boy's life. And so it's just such a sweet reminder that God can use anything, you know, a song on the radio, a a car driving by with, you know, a bumper sticker that someone sees at the right time. So let's be praying for situations like that. 
Yeah. And, and for moms, I mean, I just feel like now, I, so mm -hmm. I really want to see the Mr. Rogers movie. I have not seen that with Tom Hanks. Have you seen I it? I can't watch it. I, I'm, I would just gonna die cry your whole way through. Yes. Yeah. I need to see it. My husband doesn't. Maybe you and it. I, you and I can watch it together. Okay. Yes. I'll bring We're the gonna, tissues. Yeah. We want to do a praying Christian women, like, you know, planning retreat. Let's have that yes. be like bring tissues and hot chocolate and like cozy blankets mm -hmm. and maybe we'll, we'll be able to manage. <laughs> yeah. Well, after you saying that though, I mean, just for us to say to any moms out there or parents yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that are feeling inadequate, you matter, you matter to us. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> you're you doing are, an amazing job. You're doing an amazing job. I mean, I just, I remember as a young mom, just wanting desperately my mother-in-law called or I called her and I and I just started sobbing when my you know postpartum probably at that point but Aww. I was just sobbing and I said just please tell me I'm a good mom you know? that's all I wanted to hear yeah. so for you listening you are yes. a mom you are a good teacher God has called you to this God has equipped you already even if you don't know where the tools are they're there you yes. just access them and yeah. And you, you are, you are the parent Mr. Rogers knew that you would grow up to be. <laughs> that is right. Oh, I love Mr. Rogers. I do too. Do you think we have listeners young enough to have no idea what we're talking about? How sad would that be? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if we do or not. There are things that my kids say that I just laugh. I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't know what this is. Or yeah. now they're saying things that like, I'm like, what, what does yeet mean? Apparently yeet's a word. <laughs> yeet? Yeet. Like it's an exclamation. Like, I don't know. I, that's about all I know. Yeet. Oh, no. See, I haven't heard that one yet either. Uh, I'm very yeah. low on the pop culture. <laughs> <Totem know>. pole. <laughs> all righty. Well, how about we close in a word of prayer? Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we do that? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, how I don't think so. Okay. Well, how about I'll pray over some of those topics we discussed, and then we can close with our normal blessing and benediction and that sort of thing. Okay. That sounds good. God, we thank you so much for the gift of family and the gift of motherhood, the gift of children. God, there are so many women listening to our show today in so many walks of life, and you know each and every one of them. You know the woman who's longing to have kids and doesn't. You know the grandma who's missing her little grandbabies like crazy. You know the pregnant mom who's feeling nervous and scared about to give birth into a time of pandemic. You know all of those situations, God, and, and you know the the moms who are having to do school in a whole new way this year and are feeling so inadequate. And God, please just give your hand of blessing to each and every one of our listeners today. Um, meet them exactly where they need to be met. Tell them exactly those words they need to hear and help us to do a great job raising kids and please help our kids to grow into um, adults who love you and honor you and obey you. Please preserve our relationships with our children. And please especially help vulnerable kids right now who are in unsafe situations. Send them something. Send them a Mr. Rogers rerun or just yes. the right YouTube video or whatever it needs to be for them to find safety today, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we mentioned it a couple times, so we will make this our official call to action today. If you want to check out the episodes that are up on Mindful Christian Prayers, these are like 10-minute guided prayer routines that I'll just give you a minute to help pray through some of your things. So there's like prayers to end your day, prayers to reset your day, and several others on there. And they should be anywhere you're listening to us right now, you should be able to find Mindful Christian Prayers. So let's close with our blessing and benediction. May God reveal to you a glimpse of his splendor and fill you with the spirit of worship and awe. May you never lose your sense of wonder and praising such a glorious Savior. May God direct your heart to deeper levels of worship and intimacy with him. No matter what circumstances you find yourself in today, may your spirit rejoice in the Lord Almighty, whose promises and character never change. And our benediction is Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.